Welcome to the second hot topic on the breakfast this morning. Federal government is set to reduce importation of drugs from 60% to 40%. This was revealed recently by the special advisor to President Tunubu on health, talking about Salma Anas Ibrahim. Uh, she disclosed this at a workshop in Abuja. Uh, the workshop was organized to strengthen the WHO Nigeria's cooperation strategy. We have been joined by Basil Abia, research advocate, uh, Associate Kwako Research Abuja and Professor Cyril Osifo, President of Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. Good morning, gentlemen, to the breakfast. Good morning, Maureen. Pleasure to be here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, Prof, let me start with you because this concerns you directly. Give us um, how are you taking this? How are you responding to this development in your community of pharmaceuticals? Um, we, we read just like any other person, and uh, I think it's good news for us, but at the same time, there are some things that we need to raise and discuss on the matter. One, it will improve local uh, production, and that's one of the things I campaigned with when I became president, that we need to improve local production. We need to uh, make our own pharmaceuticals and medicines here. Indeed, we talked about medicine security. We all knew what happened during the COVID era. If we don't produce our medicines, we are likely to run into difficulties uh, as time goes on. However, government, as usual, has come up with policies. Uh, do welcome, but I am in doubt if stakeholders were properly consulted before such pronouncements were made. The reason is that if you reduce importation from 60 to 40, we really don't have many industries producing what we need for medicines. I'm talking about the APIs, active pharmaceutical ingredients. Hmm. We need to get the infrastructure and basic things necessary so as to enable us to produce these things and so that uh, the pharmaceutical uh, industries, not just to flourish, will be able to meet the needs of medicines uh, for the average Nigerian. Maybe I will stop there and uh, later I would uh, throw in one or two more words. So meaning this may be something that has been done without due consultations? Yeah, stakeholders should have been uh, consulted so they will advise government appropriately. One thing is to uh, make pronouncement, which is a welcome idea, like I said. Uh, the industrial pharmacists will have it. But there are, the enabling environment uh, are not necessarily there. Because one, if a pharmaceutical company will have difficulties with energy power, supply, then they may not be able to meet the needs. If pharmaceutical companies like some in Agbara, the roads are so bad, even when they produce medicines, they are not able to evacuate them appropriately. If they have difficulties accessing funds, credit facilities to enable them invest in their business, because when you reduce importation, you are actually uh, making them to be more productive. Then if they don't have access to credit facilities, that will be a problem. What I'm saying is that uh, we need to engage uh, the key players in the pharma industry so that they can tell government what exactly their credit cameras are. And together, because they welcome idea, they can improve the situation. Uh, in addition, we, we have uh, uh, this JAPA syndrome. The pharmacies, during my press statement earlier this year, many pharmacies up to, uh, right now I think I can count up to 7,000 pharmacies have left the shores of the country hmm. for, for greener pastures. And employing pharmacies is becoming a problem because you don't have them to actually serve in pharmaceutical industry. Yesterday, captain of industry talked to me that they are looking aggressively for pharmacies to man some of their uh, uh, standpoints in the industry. So manpower need is a big problem which we need to uh, address adequately as this opportunity is right here in our doorstep. Wow. But wow. I trust the government would uh, make the necessary uh, uh, arrangements and uh, discussions with stakeholders so that we can partner with government for the best. Because for us, if we do more local production, then we can not only supply Nigeria, we supply the West African sub-region, and that will be more foreign exchange for the country. And I hope the petrochemicals that will help us to produce the APIs will be vigorously pursued. So as to also create employment for these pharmacies who are leaving the shores for greener pastures. Hmm. Hopefully, 
better remuneration, better health, a healthy nation. Uh, when people are healthy, the workforce is healthy. Then, of course, you'll be able to do better things and there'll be uh, productivity, greater productivity in the country. Basil, let, let's have your research and macroeconomic perspective to, to what he has said and this new move by the federal government. Yeah, thank you. Um, so this looks like the, the policy announcement for the federal government very much looks like uh, there will be some forms of economic protectionism or protectionist policies to be able to protect the local industry and, in their own words, uh, incentivize more productivity. Um, I do not think that is the right policy direction to follow. Um, instead, rather, try and um, sort out some of the challenges that Prof has already highlighted. You know, um, One of the things that we worked on two years ago uh, was a, an economic master plan for all the 36 states, and including the federal capital territory. And for Lagos, we highlighted that Lagos could be uh, the hub for pharmaceutical manufacturing in West Africa if certain things were um, you know, fixed. First and foremost, the inadequate infrastructure, which he highlighted with Agbara. Uh, Agbara is a massive manufacturing zone around that Lagos, Ogun State mm -hmm. uh, gateway zone. Uh, there's skilled work, uh, workforce issues um, and it's really, really scary to, to hear from the president, uh, Prof, uh, Prof Cyril, yeah, that we've lost over 7,000 7, um, pharmacists in the last uh, three years. That's really scary because we're, 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 we're hemorrhaging with a uh, skilled workforce that is necessary to feed that particular manufacturing industry. It's very important when you're uh, in that very skill-sensitive industry to have the necessary skilled workforce. And it's better if you have localized uh, skilled workforce. Obviously, because it's cheaper. Uh, secondly, of course, uh, for me medicine security, which he um, Prof also highlighted. And then you have issues with financing. You know, financing structures uh, for these manufacturing industries. It's it's hard. The taxation problem, the mul multiple taxations that they, they uh, experience, um, access to raw materials. Uh, thank God for the refinery. Uh, we do not know when it it will start production with regards to the, the the key petrochemicals that serve the pharmaceutical industry in Lagos. But um, hopefully. That happens uh, in a year or two. So with all of these things, when you're able to um, sort out all of these structural imbalances, when you're able to sort out supply side constraints, then you now have production levels ramped up. Um, I'm thinking and I'm hoping that the, 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 the policy direction by the new, uh, uh, the new federal government uh, would be to incentivize local production first. And that's also ensuring that energy scarcity issues, we no longer have it. Uh, as a matter of fact, last year, when the price of diesel increased from 200 abruptly, from around 190 naira per liter to around 860 um, liter, um, at, at some point in the middle of the year, we had a situation where the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria were reporting that 40% uh, of their members were downsizing, hmm. reducing productive units, and that basically... Uh, tells us the, the, the macro story. The macro story is that production is shrinking, and when production is shrinking, it's obviously affecting the entire facet. So from a macroeconomic perspective, it has to be incentivizing local production rather than going protectionist. Because if you're doing economic protectionism uh, policies, what you're doing is that the price transmission is going to uh, ensure that the prices of drugs actually increase. Because when you don't have local production meeting local demand, and then you're making it harder to import, mm -hmm. uh, what you have is that the generic uh, uh, drugs for malarial treatment, uh, for instance, for hypertensive treatments, they're definitely going to increase. And then you have the niche drugs, the very uh, obscure drugs to get that will now be super sky high for, for people to be able to access. So um, first things first, solve the local challenges that we've highlighted, mm -hmm. um, infrastructure issues, skilled workforce issues. And you can do that by creating special economic zones. For instance, for, the, for our Lagos master plan, a special economic zones where all of the regulations are streamlined, where there are incentives with regards to tax, taxation, there are incentives with regards to um, energy scarcity, so that there's a supply stock of, of, of uh, gas to supply the, 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 uh, the, the gas powered uh, plant that will be able to serve that particular special economic zone, so that all of the manufacturing uh, industries that are there, that are cited there, would have reliable energy to produce. Yeah, uh, the key word there, incentivize. See. 
that's the yes. key word. Yeah. They have said that Absolutely. the reason they're coming up with this policy is to promote local manufacturing of drugs. But here are the merits of challenges that the pharmacists, that the local manufacturers are facing. So incentivize is the key word. They have also said that um, other priority areas include increasing and improving access to equal health care services and national health insurance for at least 40% of the country's population. But here we have today on the front page of the Guardian newspaper, uh, Professor Osifo, trouble in the health yeah. sector as drugs cost of care spike by 150%. Please talk to us about this. Well, that's not unexpected because uh, if um, most of the drugs like we know, especially the, uh, the, the, the critical ones, uh, the one prescription drugs, and what at times we call orphan drugs, Often drugs may be drugs needed by a few people, anti-cancer drug and the rest of them. Uh, if they are not produced here and you have to import them, then you need to go to the, uh, the open market to source for your uh, foreign exchange. And at the end of the day, um, you need to do the necessary markup and uh, uh, supply uh, the drugs at such an expensive uh, rate. However, I believe uh, an additional thing I just quickly want to put, especially concerning the drugs, the medicine uh, prices, mm -hmm. is the fact that the uh, government has, in her own wisdom, uh, decided to hands off uh, the funding of uh, uh, regulatory agencies. Uh, for me, uh, government should consider regulatory agencies, especially the Pharmacy uh, uh, Council of Nigeria, these ones regulate the policies, regulate pharmacies, regulate even the pharmacy technicians and all the ramifications in the pharma space. If they are not funded by government, it means that we may be compromising the drugs or the medicines that the average Nigerian takes. They are very strict, they are regulatory agency, and they must be properly funded so as to carry out their oversight function. They need to, if necessary, um, close down pharmacies or close down pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing at least if they don't meet the requirements. But if we say drugs are so expensive and people are not properly regulated, then the issue of uh, pick and adulterated drugs may become uh, may be on the increase. And to avoid this, I would advocate as president of pharmaceutical so society that the pharmacy council of Nigeria. Uh, should be removed and funded by the uh, federal government so that we can be sure of the quality, not just the quantity of the drugs or medicines that we take. All right. Now that you said this, uh, you're reminding me of the issues of safe drugs that Nigeria had uh, before and during the time of late Professor Dora Akonyeli. She met such a horrible situation and she fought really hard for that. Um, has has things have things changed? Uh, has the pharmaceutical industry been repositioned for greater efficiency and production of safe drugs for Nigeria? What has changed from that time to this time? Give us a scenario. Well, it, a lot has changed um, uh, under the leadership of the new DG of NAVDA. Uh, she has done extremely well, and uh, uh, not just um, coming out with policies, but has also been able. Uh, to engage pharmacies and pharmaceutical industries on what to do. Uh, most of the problems we have concerning fake and adulterated drugs uh, at times come from the open market, uh, which I think uh, uh, started with a coordinated wholesale outlet, a policy that the federal government enacted. I was there when it was opened. The Minister of Health, the Minister of Health was there, and the Governor. And uh, where we need to house everybody with PCN, the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, and NAVDAC, so that they can monitor the quality of drugs. That brings me to the issue of security. Mm -hmm. Our borders, are they were police? Anything comes. And even drugs that are adulterated, manufactured in other countries, when people know they can't pass through our ports, and NAVDAC could be there, then you have a problem if these drugs are brought in from uh, elsewhere and they're used to populate uh, uh, the market. But there must be constant surveillance. And uh, one of the things I'm trying to do to engage NAVDAC, that NAVDAC may have official, but may not be able to cover all the places. We may need to engage um, uh, pharmacists who are domiciled in the university 
so that from time to time they can conduct random analysis and make reports on to pharmacovigilance of what they found out. Because a drug that is adulterated, most of the time, are drugs that are used by a greater percentage of the people. Fakers are everywhere, even in the United States, even in Britain. But the, the rate is quite, it's not very high. But we must attempt to reduce that in this, in this country. And I must say, uh, with all forms of sincerity, I must posit that the DG Navdak have done well, but we need to assist them to do more. And that's why I'm struggling and believing that uh, if also uh, the uh, Navdak is properly empowered and not necessarily made a, a fundraising uh, uh, institute uh, for the federal government, then we might have some of these things uh, stemming down in a, in a drastic way. If, if NAVDAC is properly uh, empowered, if NAVDAC yeah, is properly, properly empowered. empowered, talk yeah. to us more about this because this is raising some <laughs> alarms in my ears. <laughs> yeah, talk to us more about NAVDAC being properly empowered. What are the constraints oh. that NAVDAC is yeah. having? Are you telling us that NAVDAC is not living up to expectation. NAPDAC is falling short of expectations because her hands or its hands are tied. No, not, not, not exactly. What I mean is that government is doing uh, a proper oversight function, but I believe NAPDAC, one, should be able to work uh, hand in hand with the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, which is also a regulatory body. Then two, uh, federal government should be able to set up laboratories for them, if possible in all the states, of uh, the Federation, particularly where you have more drugs. And then NAVDAC should be uh, provided with the state of the art uh, pieces of equipment so that they will be able to carry at short time analysis when required to know the sort of drugs that the average Nigerian is uh, consuming. And then most importantly, like I said, NAVDAC carry out post-market post surveillance, but they may not be able to go around. And I am suggesting very strongly that we could engage the services of uh, uh, pharmaceutical analysts, both in the companies and particularly in the academia, to help carry out this post-market surveillance and report their findings appropriately to NAVDAC. But again, that calls for equipping some of these facilities uh, in the universities so that we can do that. Because every drug, every drug is a poison. And if the, if you take the drug at the wrong dose, at the wrong time, not in the right place, even giving to the wrong person, that easily results. But so we must be able to assess drugs that are proper and are in the right uh, uh, perspective. And just give you a very good example and experience I had. Somebody was supplying some drugs to a particular essential drug outfit. I won't mention the state. Mm. Uh, it's a foreigner and insisted that uh, the, the, the person must buy the drugs in good quantity. It's a very simple drug, paracetamol. Uh, but by just carrying out, in, I directed a dissolution test to be carried out between that drug and what I would call a standard uh, Emzo paracetamol product. At the end of the day, the Emzo paracetamol actually w went into solution uh, within uh, seven minutes. Mm. But that particular one that was imported after 30 minutes was not, didn't go into solution. And what does that mean? Simply, if you take the one that was imported, that even after 30 minutes was still in a solid state, you won't get any particular Result. therapeutic outcome, any pharmacological effect. Mm. So these are some of the things that I think empowering NAVDAC, so that NAVDAC can empower academia to assist them do what they should do for the safety of Nigerians. I wish we had more time. Cases. So if I'm... it's paracetamol, you can imagine if it were anti-cancer drugs mm. or anti-hypertensive drugs. Mm. Your, your, your guess is as, I mean, as right as my work will happen to the patient. Horrible, Any horrible description could be there. Patient. Yeah, horrible. Any and time will not allow me. I would have wanted uh, Basil Abia to give us uh, his, his research analysis. What research have you done with regards to safety of drugs in Nigeria? And, uh, but time will not allow us. Can you give us just one minute? One minute. Tell us your response to what he has just said. I think he, he answered it even properly. And, and uh, uh, what we were able to find out was the, the scarcity of post-market surveillance, mm. um, not using evidence. Uh, and that's what we researchers are here for and we analysts are here for. 
to be able to be empowered to go out there in the market and survey uh, outcomes uh, from some of these drugs. Uh, and we're equipped with the skill sets. However, the problem is, uh, is, is there an intentionality from the demand side? And in this context, the demand side is actually uh, supposed to be NAFTAC and maybe uh, a coalition of uh, multi-stakeholders in Nigeria's pharmaceutical industry. So the scarcity of post-market surveillance, um, as Prof has uh, earlier alluded, is the number one um, issue with regards to safety of drugs. Nigeria. Well, the special advisor to the president on health, Selma Anas Ibrahim, has uh, her job cut out for her, obviously. And I don't know if she's starting on the right footing, coming out with policies without the stakeholders' involvement. Well, let's wait and see how all of this is going to play out. President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Professor Cyril Osifo and Basil Abia, Research Associate, Kwako Research Abuja, have joined us to take a look at government's move to reduce importation of drugs from 60% to 40%. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Welcome. Pleasure to be here. All right, that's the size of our package this morning on The Breakfast, but I will not leave without giving you a quote of the day. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. And that's from John Quincy Adams. Thank you for being my guests today, watching from home. Join me tomorrow on The Breakfast as we come with another package for you. I am Maureen Minnongwezi. We do have a splendid day.